Welcome everyone to another episode of Slasher Scotty. I am your host Scotty McCoy and I have another alumni from Friday the 13th on the phone and he played Luke in Friday the, in Jason Goes to Hell the Final Friday. Hey Mike, how you doing? Hey, I'm good. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. Uh, so I have a couple questions. The first one I have for you is uh, how did you get your start into acting? You know, I, uh, I, I grew up in a family that, that, uh, that was very involved in the industry. My grandfather had won an Oscar as our screenwriter, and, you know, lots of people in my family had, had been involved, and I was exposed to a lot of uh, film and, and theater at a very, very young age. And for whatever reason, you know, I remember watching a, a Charlie Chaplin movie when I was about know, five or six and just sort of being enamored of him and what he, I was sort of, I was crying and laughing at the same time the way Chaplin did, and... Mm-hmm. And um, and I just decided that's what I wanted to do. I, I, I can't really describe it, mm-hmm. but from that point on, I sort of chased it. I did a bunch of um, you know uh, plays and uh, at school, and I did summer uh, summer programs and summer stock and all kinds of stuff in college. And then when I graduated, when I graduated college, I went out to LA and just you know started to find my way in. Awesome. But the team, it was one of my earliest jobs. Awesome. So, how? Well, speaking of uh, Jason Goes to Hell, how uh, how was your audition for it? Uh, great question. So, the casting director, David Giella, was in my acting class. Uh, mm-hmm. He, uh, unlike most casting directors, he was really interested in the actor's process and, and and how to talk to actors and you know what that work is all about. It's a very mysterious thing, and people mm-hmm. don't really understand. I think sometimes how actors work or how to talk to them or whatever. And he was really taking a deep dive into this intense acting class and. And uh, I was in the class, and uh, Michelle Clooney was in the class, and so was Catherine Atwood. And so uh, at some point in the process, um, they had, I think they had finished the movie, or close right. to it, finished shooting the script, and they got notes that they needed uh, another death scene, sexy death scene maybe or something. I forget, you'll have to ask that exactly <laughs> what, what, uh, what the assignment was. But I remember I got a call from David Giella saying, do you want to... Um, you know, do you want to audition for this thing? And, you know, along with your friends in class. And so we all did. And uh, it was very warm because David's a great guy and we knew him from class. And it was, you know, mm-hmm. it was one of those easy auditions where you walk in and there are already fans, which is a great feeling. Right. Um, and I remember I read with uh, with Michelle. And so we knew each other pretty well at that point. And, um, you know, it was, a, it was one of those dream processes because, you know, we all knew each other and, and, the, and, and we knew that they were rooting for us. So right. it felt great. Awesome. Like the death scene of Michelle, um, who played Deborah in the film. How was that prepped and filmed? Uh, you know, they made an amazing uh, bunch of models of Michelle's body. You know, mm-hmm. she had to be impaled and then sort of torn apart, I think. Right. And um, they made a bunch of models of her, you know, prosthetics of her body. And so, um, you know, the, the part where we were acting and having fun, you know, she and I were cool with each other. We trusted each other. And mm-hmm. it was, you know, it was a pretty nice process. Um, in that sense, but but when she had to be killed, you know, we had it was very technical. There was a lot of different, you know, uh, mm-hmm. you know, ver- different machinations of different bodies on top of me. And at what point in the death process are we now? At which <laughs> where's the blood coming? And I remember they were shooting blood that was in it, some sort of like fire extinguisher. It looked like it's like a big hose or something, and they were just <laughs> shooting it in my face, <laughs> and I was just screaming. So I, you know, I remember the the. The gory detail the best, I guess. That was pretty. Um, that, that was that, that was a pretty intense moment where you're screaming <laughs> and they're shooting blood at you, and meanwhile the girl you're making love with is now torn open. Right. That pretty intense. <laughs> the character was killed in an off-screen death scene. So, do you know how your character was actually killed off? And if not, what yeah. uh, what way would you like to have seen your character get killed if you had the pencil? Yes, I was really disappointed that they decided in the end. I think they ran out of time and money. Mm-hmm. Um, they spent a lot of money and time on Michelle's death, which mm-hmm. was which was memorable. But I think once that had happened, you know, we can top that. So we'll just we'll hear it. But right. I know that Richard Ant, who play who was playing Jason at that moment, I guess Jason was sort of. I mean, spoiler alert, but he was inhabiting <laughs> other bodies, which was a real departure for the series, I think. Right. Anyway, Richard Ant, who uh, who's also a friend of mine, um, he was playing Jason. He was play, he was possessed by Jason at that point, and so the. The idea was, after he kills Michelle and I'm screaming, he comes over and he stomps my head with his boot. Oh, and okay. He's a large, very large man. Right. Um, and I'm lying there naked on the on the bottom of a tent, and he's like, I don't know, he's, he's like six eight, or he's just enormous, larger than life individual. <laughs> and um, 
about it. So the idea was he would crush my head, but I was like, well, let's build ahead and let's see it. Like, let me play that. Let's do that. But they were, um, I think it was, it was, it was too much too late. And, uh, you know, they had to go with the off screen death. Right. Um, and the last question I actually got for you is, uh, do you have any projects, websites, or social media accounts that you'd like to promote to our listeners? Well, um, you know, I got a lot of stuff going on right now. Um, I, I'm actually writing a series for, uh, for, um, uh, James Patterson, which is going to be next year, but, I, but there's no reason to promote that right now. But, um, but I do have a, a show called Rabbi by Mike that I'm, that, uh, I just raised money to go shoot. And okay. once the COVID is sort of what's up a little bit, we're able to do that. Okay. I'm going to shoot that pilot. And, uh, you know, at that point I'll, I'll, I'll certainly be, um, you know, publicizing mm-hmm. that through, through you guys. Right. Awesome. So, uh, like, and also anybody can look up your IMDb page and they can see also whatever you're up for, like after this interview airs and they can see everything that you have coming up as well. So that'd yeah, be great. Absolutely. There's a bunch of stuff on there. IMDb, uh, uh, you know, Michael B. Silver. And, and I also have an Instagram, uh, Michael okay. B. Silver, but, I, but I'm not big on the, on the, on the social media. I'm trying to get more <laughs> into it. My kid is trying to get into it a little more, but, um, I don't know, especially these days, it just feels like. There's not a lot on there that I want to be a part of. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Well, I thank you, Michael, for your time. All right, man. Thanks so much. I yeah. appreciate it. Keep watching. Yeah, definitely. Not a problem. You have a good rest of your day and stay safe. All right, dude. All right. Thanks so much. Be yep. safe. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.